So in 2002, uh, the biggest snowstorm to hit the East Coast on Christmas Day in 36 years hit the Northeast and Northern New Jersey. On uh, the morning before the storm hit, I got on a plane uh, to Northern Vermont to go skiing with my young children and my mother-in-law and my ex-wife. And um, my father, Russell Berry, one of the things that he loved to do was to go into New York City and pretend to be a tourist, even though he lived right across the bridge in New Jersey. And he would go to eat deli at Katz's. He would catch a show. He would stay at a nice hotel. And nothing gave him more pleasure. So before leaving the next morning, it was kind of hectic. Had to pack and get everything ready. I, for some reason, felt the need to see him. Um, and so I brought all the kids over to the hotel. We hugs and kisses, had, had like a few moments together. The next morning, uh, we got on the plane, landed in Vermont in the afternoon. Um, my father, the previous day, was not feeling great. Uh, so on the morning of Christmas Day, he actually went back to New Jersey. Um, I got all the kids into the car, packed up. For those of you with children, you know how hectic that can be. And finally buckled in, sweating profusely, and got a call from Angelica that my father had had a ma massive heart attack and died. Uh, that was uh, that was la the last time I saw him was the day before. Um, and uh, my father was a diabetic, and as a result, did not feel the typical symptoms of a heart attack. Uh, he had peripheral neuropathy, which means he didn't really feel things from his knee down. And he felt uh, very tired when he was, in fact, having a heart attack. What I didn't understand then, and I still don't understand completely, is why somebody who had given a grant, a sizable grant, to Columbia University for diabetes and had the best care available didn't know that, didn't say, I think this is happening. I need to go to the hospital. Uh, he died alone that day. I'm surprised this is this emotional. I told the story a million times, but for some reason, being in this environment, it's making it feel very emotional. So in 1998, four years before he passed away, he gave uh, a sizable grant to Columbia University, which landed him on the Forbes uh, 40 Most Generous Americans list for that year. When you consider that Russell Berry, who basically peddled tchotchkes and teddy bears and picture frames, uh, was at somewhere around 36, I believe, where Bill Gates was number one, that was a pretty amazing accomplishment and something that was an amazing legacy. And that legacy that he left to the world um, you know, doesn't cloud the legacy that he left to, to me and my five siblings. You know, love of Israel, love of bagels and lox and deli food, <laughs> uh, love of opera, being a good person, being a caring person, loving the underdog, betting on the underdog, um, and more importantly, growing as a philanthropist in his community that was surrounded by pretty incredible philanthropists at the time. I think Bergen County was rated as the second most generous county in America when it came to Jewish giving. So he grew up around all these amazing philanthropists and felt like his business as it grew, that he had the good fortune to be sort of generous in that way. Nevertheless, in 2002, there were 13.1 million Americans diagnosed with uh, diabetes. Um, in 2015, the latest numbers that I could get, there were 30 million. Americans diagnosed with diabetes. So despite this remarkable legacy that he gave, it was just getting worse. And so for me, it was, we have to look farther upstream. We have to understand where, you know, the story about the babies in the river and so on and so forth. I won't tell that one. Um, but we have to look further upstream. We have to understand what is the environmental cause of this. We can't just be in the lab. We can't just treat the symptoms. We have to understand what the entire ecosystem is about. So for me personally, that led to um, reading a lot, um, 
for those of you who read The Omnivore's Dilemma and, and other books on issues in our food system and becoming really, really focused on what is wrong with our food system and what we can do to change it. Um, I personally bought a farm upstate <laughs> and found myself with my hands in the dirt uh, really trying to understand how we can personally transform the food system and realizing how incredibly difficult farming is um, and how incredibly difficult it is to transform it, and yet it's happening around us. So I was also faced with the issue, sort of the binary decision of whether or not just to honor my father's legacy through our support at Columbia University, or can we take it in other directions in order to really address the overall ecosystem. And when my father was alive, we spent a lot of time discussing leaving space for future and anticipating things that we couldn't anticipate. And so today, we at the foundation are trying to focus on a portfolio approach to di diabetes. Our single biggest investment continues to be Columbia University and other areas, but also focusing on the ecosystem in general. And um, I just want to stop for a second and say, normally, I'm actually pretty comfortable speaking in front of people, but I don't think I've ever shared something so intimate in front of a group. So please excuse me for, for being a little bit. <laughs> um, so we as a foundation are focusing on a portfolio approach to uh, diabetes and ecosystems and understanding that. And as a philanthropist, that we want results in our philanthropy and we want to be able to see those results, it's a very difficult bet to make because we, we might not see those results. But there are incremental changes happening around us every day. Um, for those of you who went on the Urban Adama trip the other day, it was an amazing environment to see. And knowing that when you change a child's perspective on farming, and eating good food, that it sticks with them for life. And when your child wants that good food, everybody else wants what they want. So thank you for listening, and uh, have a great conference. <laughs>